Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Come on in and say hi to me. Come keep me company tonight. Only gonna be on for an hour. Nine oh seven. Ten oh seven. We're done. <laughs> My voice is contagious. What do you mean? What does that mean? What does that mean, Stephanie? share some things and we want to pray. Praying for anybody that has any prayer requests, please put your prayer requests up. Um, type it in so we can pray about it tonight if you have any prayer requests. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Stephanie. Yes, oh, yeah. 
How was your day, Miss Stephanie? <laughs> I have so much to smile about, girl. Girl, like you gotta smile. You gotta make yourself smile. You have to make yourself smile. I think everybody should practice smiling, right? I think you should practice it. Become more aware of your presence. Experience the glory of goodness. Come more aware of your presence. Just experience the glory of goodness. Become. Oh, now I'm going to smile more because of you. Thank you. Now I'm just going to be smiling all day long because of Stephanie. Make a smile. Make a smile. Make a smile. Make a smile. How's the weather there? It was so hot today. Oh. Make a swear, 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 swear, swear. Oh my gosh, it was so hot today. Then he tried to trick me and think it was going to rain, and then nothing happened. The wind started picking up. I was like, oh, it's about to rain. Nothing. I'm so not feeling Florida. Florida is working my nerves. Stephanie, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to give them a couple of more minutes. Hey, Elder Skinner, God bless you. How are you? Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for joining us tonight. Oh, why did my music stop? Oh, that wasn't good. We're getting ready to start in a couple of minutes. I'm just going to give people one more minute. And then we're going to go ahead and get started. Oh, it's too hot, sir. Too hot. A good place to visit, but too hot. It's ridiculous. Hey, Marie, darling. How are you, sweetie? You don't call me anymore, but I still love you. <laughs> Marie, I needed you to do a video. And I need you to send it to me about the healing or just whatever you want to say about the ministry. I need one more video. You heard me, darling? Can you please do like another video? Um, and send it to me, please. You just send it through Instant Messenger. I love you too, my dear. Let me know if you can do a video, please. Oh, thank you. Can you do it tomorrow? Mm 
Pray for California. Okay, after work, that's fine. Thank you. Please remember, remind me to pray for California. I was supposed to do it last night and I forgot. Please remind me to pray for California. Okay, we're getting ready to get started. Oh, for baseball, you can have it. It is too hot. Maybe in September, October. But right now, it's just ridiculous. Thank you for joining us tonight, for joining me tonight for the Healing and Prophetic Hour. Thank you so very much. Hey, Marie, um, anybody, can you please share this on your Facebook page or share this? Can you share this to my page? Is, is that possible? I don't know. Or maybe I have to share it to my own page at the end. <laughs> Go Tampa Rays. Okay. Listen, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Amen. We just wanted to jump on. Tuesday nights are going to be my late nights. I'll be on like at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So 6 o'clock California Time and 8 o'clock Central Time on Tuesday nights. So Tuesday nights, just know... I'm not going to be on at the 8 o'clock hour. I'll be on an hour later. But thank you for those of you that came on tonight to join me. I thank God for you. Listen, if you have not, if you have not gone to my YouTube page, Prophet Darcy Burgess or Darcy Burgess Ministries, it's the one with the blue and white outfit with the blonde hair. That's the page because I have different pages. The one that I'm trying to get, I'm building on, will be the one with the blonde hair. It's my ministry page. And I have it set up. So Stephanie, Elder Skinner, Sister Marie, Prophet Marie, if you haven't gone, please go up there and subscribe to my channel. I'm, I'm still trying to learn how to download and collapse all the videos. So it's a work in progress, but it's coming together. So please, please go and visit my um youtube page and subscribe and um stephanie and everybody and marie and anybody else i have my classes starting in september my page will be ready by the end of this but within the next two weeks and so you can actually go on the page and you could register you can register for the classes that you're interested in i'm doing a two-day series challenge it's going to be phenomenal it's about how do you um how do you get your prayers answered it's going to be so powerful i'm just excited about about really um being able to do this um oh i am just so really really excited um please please Um, please, oh, thank you, sir. I'm still trying to figure out my page. I'm still trying to figure out how I can download. Thank you for going on. I hope you subscribe, Elder Skinner. I'm still trying to do it, but trust me, 
when it's when I when it's done, it's gonna be together. It's gonna be together. I'm gonna put music up. I just gotta learn how to do it. But please, please, if somebody knows how to do it, let me know. But right now we're working on trying to collapse those pages, put my videos up there. I have videos here, videos there, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. So we're trying to pull it together, but please go and subscribe. I really want people to subscribe. Um, I would be so, um, hey, Pastor Dominic, thank you for joining us. Hey, Amen. I was looking at your video. I saw that you had something on today. For the blessings of you, man of God. Um, I don't know what's going on with my eye all of a sudden, but please, please, if you have not gone to my YouTube page, please go on and hit the subscribe button. Please, please do that. September is the month where we are starting the classes. We're doing the mentorship classes, the mentorship slash coaching classes. All the information is going to be on my new page. That will be up in within the next week or two. We're just putting the finishing touches on. They keep telling me, I need you to do this, and I try to do it. It looks like on the weekend is when I'm going to get some time. But, however, we are almost done, so that page will be up and running. So I'm so excited about that. Then we have the challenge that we're doing about the prayer challenge. The, um, we have, God is doing some great things, and um, I believe that, I believe that um, whatever God gives us to do, that we're supposed to maximize it. We're supposed to maximize. So I'm in my maximizing season. I'm in my season of maximizing and and taking what God has given me and just just doing it, perfecting it, and doing it in the spirit of excellence. So it is coming together. If you're interested, I know some of you that are up here have expressed interest for the the mentorship class and even taking the um the two day class about how about making sure knowing that your prayers are answered and then we're gonna do something that's different. It's one thing to know how to get your prayers answered, but it's another thing is how do you script it out? How do you phrase them? Like you know a lot of times we just teach on prayer. We really don't teach on the whole aspect of it that sometimes you know while you're sitting in your time of just waiting in the presence of the Lord, that you can actually begin to write out things and write out a prayer that you can craft, that you can literally have, that um, you can use in prayer. Hey, Dana. So I'm so excited to introduce this part of the um, prayer ministry. And so it's going to be exciting. We're going to do that. It's two days, a two-day series. Trust me, it's going to be so powerful. It's I can't I can't express it anymore. I know that some of you are have been have been hitting me up saying if you want to take the classes. I have your email. Susan, the, Susan is up and running and it's on the page. September we are doing the classes. September probably like the beginning of October. We are starting the School of Intercession. The School of Intercession. So we're going to have a number of classes that we'll be offering. Uh, I believe that God is raising up prayer. Prayer is the, is the order of the day. Prayer is the order of the day, Sister Dana. And I believe God wants to perfect his people in the spirit of prayer. Pastor Dominic, I believe God wants to perfect his people in the spirit of prayer. I know when people come on, they're like, she's talking about prayer again. Yes, prayer is my world. Prayer makes my world go round because that is my communication with the Father. That is my communication with the Father. That is me being able to, to communicate and him to communicate. It's a reciprocal. It's God, it's me speaking to God and God speaking to me, then me speaking to God. It's a communication. And so I I'm excited to 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 um to talk about it and to teach on it. Because, you know, I I'm doing so I'm doing my YouTube and I'm asking people to do videos and you know if the ministry has blessed them do a video send it to me and i'm going to put it either on my youtube it's going to go on my ministry page and just just listening to the um listening to the testimonials that people are giving about 
about the ministry, but really it's about prayer, right? It's about what God has done through through us through prayer. I don't care what anybody's going through, prayer is the answer. I don't care what you're going through and what you're dealing with. It's amazing to me how we go through things in life and the last thing that we decide to do is pray. It is literally amazing to me that we're getting slapped upside our head, right? We're getting punched in the face by the enemy and our last resort is prayer. And we, we don't even think about prayer. We, we, we want to fight it out ourselves or we want to lash out ourselves. We might eat it away. We might scream it away. We might cry it away. But we will not pray it away. And it doesn't make any sense to me. If I knew that I had direct communication with God, direct communication with God, just through me taking time out to talk to him, I think I would go that route other than having to go all the way around the corner to come back to say, you know what, I think I should pray. It doesn't make sense to me. It does not make sense to me. And I believe in this hour, Pastor Dominic, that God is poor. I was like, every time I go on like Facebook, I see where people are talking about prayer. Everybody is talking about prayer. Every time I go on Facebook, I hear people talking about prayer. Somebody is up there praying because God, God is saying the same thing. The Lord is speaking the same thing throughout, <coughs> throughout the country, throughout the world. Everybody is talking about prayer. There has to be a reason why everybody is talking about prayer. It has to be a reason. I believe that God is getting ready to do something and it's going to take his people praying. There's so many different prophetic words that have come out and people said that they have these dreams and they have visions or they have this prophetic word. I get it. The Lord spoke to me today and he said these words. He said things are changing. Things are about to change. And I was like... What does that mean? What does that mean? All, like I just kept hearing the Lord, things are getting ready to change. Things are about to change. Things are about to change. And I'm like, okay, God, what is about to change, right? And so, but I had to go into prayer. Okay, I'm not going to sound like a broken record tonight. I promise you guys, I'm not going to sound like a broken record tonight. But what I am going to say is that Whatever is getting ready to change, whatever is getting ready to happen, we have to be ready for prayer, through prayer. We have to be ready to have this direct communication with God in this hour through prayer. We cannot continue to go through our daily activities Hey, Henrietta, darling, we can't continue to go through our daily day, go through our day without taking time out to pray. There's too many things happening that we can't afford to go out without having some type of direct communication with God. There are some things that the Lord wants to get to us. There are some things that the Lord wants to, wants to release to the body of Christ. But if he's going to release it and we don't, we're not ready or we don't hear him giving instructions for this release, then that means we can miss what God is getting ready to release. There is an outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord that's getting ready to take place. There is an outpouring, I'm going to say it again, there is an outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord 
that's getting ready to take place. There is a releasing that's coming to the body of Christ. But if we're not in the right place at the right time, we are liable to miss this outpouring. The Bible says it like this in Acts, the, that the people were in one place, at the same place at the same time. On the day of Pentecost, they was in one place at the same time. God, Jesus told them, go. He told them where to go and to stay there until. What if there is a place that God is trying to get us to and he's saying, go to this place and wait for my outpouring. But because we are not in relationship or in daily communication with him. What if the one day that God is about to release where he's getting ready to move and what he's getting ready to do, but we don't we, we have not taken time to go and seek him, to go into that place. I believe what has happened, my brothers and my sisters, is that the church has put such a stigma on prayer that it made people uncomfortable. It made people feel like, oh, it's, it's so tedious to do when prayer wasn't meant to be that way. The Bible says the disciples came to Jesus and he said, teach us how to pray. He taught them it had to be a couple of lines. It wasn't like a long prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation as we... It was a couple of lines of prayer. Jesus... When they asked Jesus to teach us how to pray, he gave them a couple of lines of prayer. But it hit, hear me, it hit the important parts. Recognition, our Father, who art in heaven, it got worshiping. We recognize, we worship our Father with us in heaven. Hallowed, hallowed be thy name. That's worship. Thy kingdom come, thy will, we acknowledge in him, we acknowledge in his will. But it was only a couple of lines. We, the church, has made prayer and it put this stigma on it. And it made people like kind of not want to go into prayer because they felt if I didn't say the right words or if I didn't pray for a certain amount of time. If I didn't pray for a certain amount of time, then what happened, right? Then maybe I missed it. Maybe I didn't, if I don't know what to say, maybe the Lord, somebody, I heard somebody say when they were beginning to pray, Pastor Dominic, they were saying that, they were saying that maybe God didn't, you know, like they was upsetting God because they did not know what to say. And that kind of like bothered me when I heard that. But they were talking from the, you know, from the, um, from a good place in their heart. But it kind of bothered me when I heard that because it was like, that's not our father. Our father, which art in heaven. My daddy, who art in heaven. When I approach my daddy, here we go. I, I don't approach him like I approach just anybody. Jesus says, our father which art in heaven, hallowed, holy is your name. Hallowed is your name. We have taken prayer and made it bigger than what God intended it to be. Prayer is direct communication. Now, the way I communicate is going to be different the way Pastor Dominic communicates or the way Sister Henrietta communicates. But her communication is just as important as my communication. But we all have different characters. We all have different dispositions. I am, I am just like this, right? That's me. 
Darcy is like, I'm bursting of energy. I'm just going to, that's me, right? That's that New Yorker in me. I got all this energy and I'm just going to, I'm flavorful when I pray. That's me. That's my character. But somebody else might be quiet in their approach. Does that make my prayer better than their prayer? No, because we both have two different relationships with the father. So somebody might want to just talk softly. And God, I thank you. And that, but that's good for them. Somebody like myself, I'm loud, right? So I talk loud. There's sometimes I can talk softly, but nine out of 10 times I talk loud. That doesn't mean the louder I am, the more God hears me. That's not what that means. That just means my character. God loves me for who I am. He loves you for who you are. He does not expect you to come like Darcy comes to him. He expects you to come like Henrietta comes to him. And both places done correctly. So it's not necessarily the sound of your voice. It's, what, it's the sound of your heart. Not so much the sound of my voice, but it's the sound of my heart. What is my heart resounding in prayer? What is my heart saying in prayer? Because that's what the father is looking He said man looks on the outward appearance. Man hears this big voice and man hears all of this. But what is God hearing? He hears according to your heart. What is your heart saying in prayer? Because I can be loud and boisterous, but I don't have the heart of prayer. I don't have the faith to pray. So I say things. And I can say it loud. And boy, that was the Pharisees and Sadducees. That was the problem. They did everything out in the open. They wanted people to see them praying. They wanted people to see them fasting. But their hearts were far from the Lord. It's what is your heart saying in prayer? Because that's what God is looking at. He's looking at what your heart, because out of the mouth, the heart speaks. So what is your heart saying in prayer? That should be the question. What is your heart's cry? What is your heart's cry during prayer? Because that's what's going to get God to respond. Because your heart's cry, if it's crying the right thing, it's going to cry God what gets God's attention. So my heart is going to cry what gets God's attention, Henrietta. And my, my heart knows because the spirit of the Lord lives on the inside of me. So my heart knows what the spirit is saying when it's making intercession. So as the spirit makes intercession, my heart will cry out. My heart will cry out because it knows what the spirit is interceding for. So when my heart cries out, what now happens? My heart is crying out and my mouth regurgitates what it hears my heart say. And then I can get God's attention because my heart and my spirit are in agreement. So I can get God's attention. The Bible says Jesus was passing by and the blind man cries out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He acknowledged who he was and then he cried for mercy. That sounds, have mercy on me, O Lord. He's giving him back his word. Jesus then stops. He gets his attention because he heard the man cry out. What did the man cry out? What was in his heart? His heart's cry was, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. So he cries out. Jesus stops. And now he has Jesus' attention. And now the manifestation of healing can be done. 
We have to be so we have to be able to make sure that our heart's cry lines up with the word of God. I constantly say this everybody. God is only obligated to respond to his will and to his word. His word and his will are the same thing. He's only obligated, Pastor Dominic, to respond to his will and his word. A lot of times we just think that he's going to respond to my emotions. He's only obligated to respond to his will and his word. They are the same. So when I learn to pray his word, I know. Now I'm tapping into my class. I'm going to back up out of there. I'm going to go deeper than that. Trust me, we're going to go deeper than that. But it's just, but this is the realms of why, why I feel that, that, that we've been taught wrong when it comes to prayer. We're not taught to, to give God back his word. But Jeremiah is clear. Jeremiah 1 and 12 says, God's word is God speaking to us. And he says, I watch over my word to perform it. When we pray, we should not go into prayer with our emotions like the world is coming to an end. Oh God, I need you to do this right now. God, listen. I should come giving him his word because my emotions is not going to get him to move. My emotions is not going to get him to stop. My emotions is not going to get his attention, but he will stop for his word. He will stop for his word because you're giving it back. You're crying out. We don't cry out, God, I'm sick. Heal me. But we do cry out, God, you said that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. So according to your word, be it unto me, I am healed. That is the heart's cry. I don't cry, oh God, I got a migraine headache. And Lord, I just need you to take the pain away. And... But if I cry, Lord, you said in your word, healing is the children's bread. If I cry, you were wounded for my transgressions. You were bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon you, God. And therefore you declared that by your wounds, the wound that you received, I healed. If I'm broke or I'm having financial problems, I don't cry, God, I'm tired of being broke. I need you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you know. Lord, you know what I'm going through. No, but what if I cry? Daddy, you said the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to you. You said no good thing would you withhold from me. You said. That you, you are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. So therefore, Father, I'm asking you to provide for you are my provision. According to Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 through 14, you have declared, blessed shall I be. That gets God's attention. Versus me telling God my problem. He already knows my problem. He wants us to pray the solution, not the problem. I don't pray my problem. I pray the solution. The solution for healing, for sickness is healing. So I pray concerning healing. I don't got to pray my problem. We don't pray the problem. God is already aware of what's going on. His eyes move to and fro throughout the land. He knows. He already knows what's going on. I don't have to tell him what's going on. I pray the solution. Somebody type that in. We have to pray the solution, not the problem. 
Somebody type that in for me. There it is. I see you, Pastor Dominic. I know that blessed me when I said it. Somebody type that in for me. We must pray the solution, not the problem. God is already aware of the problem. I do not have to go through a discourse telling him how the enemy is fighting me. The enemy is going to do his job. Sometimes in prayer, we waste so much time giving the devil praise. How do you mean? Constantly saying the devil did this and the devil's fighting me. Listen, I don't care what he's doing. The solution is you promise that whatsoever I ask in Jesus name, you will do it. That's the solution. We don't need to glorify the devil in prayer. We know he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know he's the enemy of God, therefore he's our enemy. I get that. But do I have to rehearse that in prayer? No. What I do is I pray the solution. The Bible says that we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. A lot of times in prayer, we get, hear this everybody, we get frustrated in prayer because we don't see our prayers answered, but we're frustrated in prayer everybody because could it be that we don't know enough of the word? Ooh. Could it be that we don't know enough of the word to regurgitate the word in prayer? Thank you, Dana. Thank you. You understand? How are you going to give God back his word and you don't know his word? So now I'm frustrated in prayer because I've been praying my emotions. I've been praying the problem and not the solution. And now I'm frustrated because I'm not seeing a response to my prayer. I'm not seeing a response to prayer. So now I'm frustrated and then the enemy comes and does his job and fills your head up with stuff that maybe God doesn't care or maybe this isn't on God's mind or maybe it's not God's will, especially if you're praying for healing. The enemy will come in and just tell you, well, maybe healing is not for you. That doesn't line up with his word. If you know his word, then you know healing is his will. Healing is the children's breath. It is God's will to heal you. So it's not that it's not his will to heal. Then we have to figure out where is the disconnect in prayer. If it's true, if no matter what it is, if you're not getting a response, what is the disconnect? It's sure not with God, so it has to be with something that I am not doing. Thank you, Henrietta. I see you. It has to be us, Pastor Dominic. It's not God. But because we don't study his word, we don't rightly divide his word, we'll get a piece of a scripture and run with it. And then we try to put it out there and it doesn't. God is only obligated to respond to his will and to his word. He may bottle up our tears, but it does not mean that he'll answer because of our tears. But he will stop. He will come down when we give him back his word. When I agree, because remember, God's word is him speaking to me. So when I agree with what he has already said, why would God not answer? It just doesn't make, if you think about it, it doesn't make any sense. If I'm saying what you're saying and I'm agreeing with what you're agreeing with, 
Why would I not get a positive result or a positive response? I tell my child to clean their room. If you clean your room, I'm going to give you so and so and so and so. My child cleans their room. They do what I ask them to do. Then why would I not bless them? Why would I, why would I not give them what I said I would give them? It's really that simple. We make it harder than what it is. We put stipulations on things. God, oh my. God didn't put stipulations on it. We put stipulations on things. We make people think they got to jump through all types of hoops. Just to be healed. As if you have to be saved to be healed. That's not even scripture. That doesn't line up. When there were plenty of people that Jesus healed and said, Now, go, that faith has made you whole, or go and sin no more. So that says to me that they were sinners when they were healed. So no, I don't have to be a Christian to be healed. But if I don't know the word of God, I would think that because man put stipulations on things that God never stipulated to. Then we wonder why our prayers are not being answered. We wonder why, Pastor Dominic, our prayers, Henrietta, why are our prayers not being answered? Because we don't have the right pattern. We don't have the right strategy. We don't have the right, we don't have it. We're doing things that we have been taught to do, but it's not scriptural. Half of the things that we're requiring, God is like, I never said that. I never, he's looking at Jesus. We never said that, right? He's looking like, we never, Holy Ghost, we never said that. And they looking like, I didn't say that. Did you say that? He's like, I didn't say it. That's how they looking at each other. I never said that. It is the Father's good pleasure to bless his children. God wants to bless us more than we want to be blessed. That's his heart. That's his will to bless his kids. <clears throat> it says, how much more would your earthly father do for you? How much more would your heavenly father do for you than your earthly father would? As parents, there's nothing that we would not do for our children. Especially when they're doing what we have asked them to do. Or they're doing what we have required them to do. We will go out of Andabakuria Bandiosa Tabaka. I don't know who it is. Oh my God. Wow. I'm just going to say it. I don't know if somebody's trying to have a child, wants to have a child, but God is about to give you a child. I don't know if you're on this one or you're going to be watching it by replay, but there's somebody, there's a family that, that they want to have children, but they have not been able to have children. But God is about to give you your child. You're not going to have to adopt. Or go through foster care. God is literally getting ready to bless you to conceive. I don't know if you're on here or you're watching on replay. But God is about to give you. You've been praying. I see you and your wife. You're praying. Asking God to give you a child. God is about to give you your child. Receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That came out of nowhere. Wow. Listen, it is the Father's good pleasure to bless us. It is his good pleasure because when he blesses us, we testify and we tell about it. And when we tell about it, right, what happens? When we tell about it, 
then now somebody else will want to trust him as well. And then they'll begin to pray. It becomes a revolving door. I, God bless me, I tell about it. Pastor Dominic, your faith goes, then now you pray, then Henrietta, and it just, be, it just begins to build and to build. That is how it's supposed to work. But the problem is we don't, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know the, what's the word I'm looking for? We don't know the formula. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We don't know the formula. So what we do is we begin, sir. We begin to just do things because of what we heard or what we were taught. God bless the older saints. That's, you know, they taught according to their knowledge. They taught according to their knowledge at that time. But there's more now. There's more knowledge. There's more things out there. There's more understanding. So we have to study. We have to give ourselves to the word of God. Because if you don't have enough word on the inside of you, then your prayer is limited to how you pray. They taught us this, that if you are looking for specific things, Search the scripture to find on that level of what you're looking for. So if I'm looking for a job or I need some type of provision, I need to search the scriptures about God's provision. I need to search the scriptures about God's healing. That is one of the things that we're going to be doing and I'm so happy about in this class is that we're talking about targeted prayers and what that looks like. Because a lot of times the Bible says about how we pray amiss. That we can pray and God will answer, but sometimes we pray amiss. So what that means is sometimes we pray prayers, but we're praying the wrong prayers. We're praying amiss. So I thank God that the Holy Spirit put that in my spirit to do, to teach about targeted prayers, what that looks like. Do you not know that in prayer, we can pray so we hit the bullseye every time we go into prayer? That we hit the bullseye in prayer. There's too much knowledge out here to be praying just to be praying. I believe that we are on the brink of getting ready to see the church. And people say it all the time. This is the church's finest hour. I so believe that we are getting ready to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe that brothers and sisters. I believe that. I believe this is the hour that we are getting ready to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What is his goodness? His prayers, being, the prayers being answered. That is God showing us his goodness. He's going to release miracles, signs, and wonders. In the last days, he promised to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. I believe we have stepped into this time. But if we won't pray, if we fail to pray, then while God is pouring out, we will miss it, sir. Because we're in the wrong place at the wrong time, saying and doing the wrong thing, thinking that we're going to get a result. If you do the same thing over and over again, Thinking you're going to get a different result. That is insanity. Something has to change. If I've been praying for some things and I have not gotten an answer, then I have to understand that it's me. I have to do something differently. Because we know God answers prayers. We have 66 books of the Bible that shows us he is a prayer answering God to the smallest of things, to the big, great things. God answers prayers. He says there is nothing too hard for 
him. He says with God all things are possible. So it doesn't matter what we are going through or what we're facing. With God nothing is impossible. Therefore, no matter how small or how gigantic, no matter how big, God answers prayers. He did not say, I'm only a prayer answering God for the small things. But he did say, if you speak to a big mountain and command the mountain to move, then the mountain will do what you say. Why can I move mountains? Because God created the mountains. The spirit of the Lord lives inside of me. I say what he says. So if I say to the mountain to be moved, then the God that created the mountain, the mountain doesn't hear Darcy. He hears the God in me. He hears God. The God that created him. He hears God telling him to move mountain. So why would the mountain still stay in the way? I'm not talking. He hears the God on the inside of me. Release the word move mountain. We think it's us. But it's the spirit of God. The spirit of God. Listen to me and I'm almost done. The spirit of God. This is the spirit that came over. Well, let me back up. This is a spirit that breathed life into, into dirt. God forms, God the Father forms man out of dust, out of dirt. He was still not alive. The Holy Spirit of God comes in and he comes in and blows life into Adam. And the Bible says then he became a living soul. That life, that breath, that creative God. It talks about it in Isaiah where God weighs the mountains in his hands. That mountain is not going to be moved because of me. He's going to be moved because of the God in me. And he recognizes this is powerful. He recognizes the sound of God that created him. So yes, if I speak to the mountain, the mountain will re be removed because when I say mountain move, he hears God. He hears God say move. Then that mountain cannot stay in place. It skips away. Because what created it has given it direction. Why won't you open up your mouth and begin to speak? Why won't you open up your mouth and begin to say what God has already said? If God can create a mountain and cause you to speak to the mountain and the mountain is moved, why won't you speak to your situation? Your situation is responding to the God that's on the inside of you. We are, we're doing too much and we're doing too little. It's really simple. We have made it harder than what it is. If the Holy Spirit in me that was here, that breathed life, he came upon Mary and she conceived. The Holy Spirit full of power is on the inside of me. And I'm saying what he is saying. Why won't I have what I say? Listen. My time is up. I want us to understand. 
the power of prayer. Prayer is so powerful. Prayer is so powerful. And if we can ever learn how to operate in the realm of prayer, it would not be so tedious to go into the presence of the Lord. I know the place that I am now in prayer is I'm doing stuff throughout my day and I'm like, oh God, I haven't prayed. You understand? It's like I recognize that I hadn't had my time with God. And now I look forward to having time with God because I understand the relationship. I understand that even sometimes in prayer, God may not speak, but me and him are chilling. We're just chilling. But that's a form of communication. You know when you're with your spouse. Sometimes y'all just sitting here watching TV together. But that's one of the best times that y'all spend. Because it's still a form of communication. It's still a place of intimacy. We have to change the dynamic of prayer. My assignment, I believe, is to teach people how to change the dynamic of prayer. To change their approach to prayer. Right? To change the feeling of prayer. That prayer is a joyful thing. I used to be that person. I was, I'm an intercessor. And it was the hardest thing for me to pray. Because I was like, oh God, when I go into prayer, you got to do all this. And you got to listen. No, 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 no. Not true. Not true. My job, my assignment for this time is to really birth prayer. Birth a prayer movement. Birth, the Lord told me years ago that I will raise an army of intercessors. And I believe I'm living that out right now. Pouring into people, pouring into intercessors, getting intercessors to stand and up and to do what they're supposed to do. And to be happy about their intercession. People want to pray. Be happy about prayer. Sometimes I get it wrong. Please don't think that I get it right all the time. I, I, let me correct that. Sometimes I get it wrong when things happen. I'm like, oh, God. And then I have to talk myself off the ledge and say, Darcy, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? What are you doing? Right? I have to talk myself off the ledge. What are you doing? Now I'm learning to say to God when things are happening, I say these words. This is the last thing I'm going to share with you. But I say these words to God. I've learned this. That I say, God, basically, I know you. And I know that you're up to something. And whatever I'm dealing with right now, I believe you have a plan for it. That's what I say. That is what I say to God. That literally, I might change it every now and again, but basically it's saying, God, I know that you have a plan in this. Right? I know that you have a plan in this. I know that you know what you're doing. Now, it took me some time to get there, right? It took me some time to get there. But I'm learning because of relationship, guys, that God has a plan. I may not know it. I may not understand it. I may not even like it right now. But I trust you to be God. I trust you to be God. That you're working something out far more than what I can even imagine. My mind can't see it. My eyes can't see it. But I know you. That's relationship. I know God. And I know that you love me. And I know your thoughts towards me are good. You, everything, every thought that you have for Darcy, it is good. And because it's good, then that means... This plan, whatever I'm going through, when it's all said and done, is going to be good. It's going to be good. My assignment is to change the way people see prayer. See prayer. I believe that that's an assignment from the from the Father. To change the way we see prayer. And to get us to really praying because we're going to have to pray. 
we're going to need prayer. My time is up. Father, I thank you for tonight. I give you glory and I give you honor. Lord, I pray that something was said that was poured into your people. And Lord, what I see in the spirit that there was a seed that was deposited. And I literally see this plant growing up. I see the stem and I can see the, the, the buds. I thank you, Lord, because somebody has caught this tonight. A seed was deposited, and from the seed that was deposited, my God, there is a flower that's getting ready to sprout up. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless your people. I pray for anybody on this line that, or somebody that's replaying this that, that needs healing. Father, we know that by your stripes, by the wounds that was put on Jesus' body, we were healed. Father, we thank you, and we just take our healing right now. We take our healing right now. We take our healing right now. Father, we give you glory. Father, if people, somebody's looking for a job, Father, I come into agreement with them right now because you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You said it in your word. You said a cattle on a thousand hills belongs to you. You said no good thing would you withhold from us. You said if we ask, you will give it unto us. God, we thank you. You said, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospered. Father, we thank you that it is your will for us to prosper. We thank you, God, according to Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14 we are the blessed of the Lord so father I bless your people right now in the name of Jesus I bless them and I decree God according to your word and your will that whatever they are asking for that it lines up with your word and it lines up with your will and therefore it equals manifestation so father I thank you for manifestation right now I thank you that right now prayers and they will call Raman di Costandio Shata Bakaya. Prayers are being answered right now. According to your word, we come into agreement that whatever your people need, Father, there are people that have loved ones in the hospital. Oh God, that are on ventilators, that are dying, that, that have surgery. Oh God, Lord, that are suffering with COVID. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that when they listen to this Facebook Live, God, I decree and I declare that the healing power of Jesus Christ will be released because you watch over your word to perform it. And we know that your word says that you are the Lord God that healeth thee. We know, God, your wounds have gotten us our healing. We know, God, healing is the children's bread. We know, God, that it is your will to heal. So, Father, I come into agreement with your word. I come into agreement with the intercession that the Holy Spirit and the Father is making on our behalf. And I release your healing power in the name of Jesus. I decree healing manifestations. I decree, God, that people that need jobs... They will walk in to get jobs. God, oh God, jobs that they don't even deserve, that they don't have the education for. I decree and I declare that those jobs are theirs now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for spontaneous healings. I thank you for spontaneous moves of God. I thank you, God, for a fresh move of your spirit. Father, I thank you that you are pouring out upon everybody that is listening to this Facebook Live, I decree a fresh anointing. I decree fresh fire in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. I decree and declare that you will have encounters with the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will become your best friend. I decree and I declare that he will lead and guide you into all truth, that he will walk before you, walk next to you. I decree and I declare that whatsoever thing you need shall be given unto you because we give God back his word. 
Oh, Ramasa. Father, I thank you that somebody's getting out the hospital right now. I thank you, God, that you're literally raising somebody out of the hospital right now. Father, I thank you. I thank you right now. I thank you right now. I thank you right now. I thank you for spontaneous healing. You're healing the heart. You're healing blood conditions. You're healing right now. Father, I thank you for healing right now. You're healing. The manifestation of healing is coming on your people right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we declare how great you are. How great you are. We declare it right now. You are great and you are greatly to be praised. Lord, we thank you for the manifestation of your power. We thank you, oh God, because right now you are answering us. Right now, God, we thank you that we are praying the solution. The solution to sickness is healing. The solution of poverty is prosperity. We are praying it, oh God. Lord, I pray for your, for your five-fold ministry gifts. Lord, I pray you stir them up. I pray you encourage them. I pray you fill them up with more of you, more faith, more power, more teaching, more knowledge, more wisdom, more strength, more anointing. Oh, God, a fresh fire. Come upon your body. Come upon your people. Come upon your fivefold now in the name of Jesus. We declare that you are great. How great you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just give your name the praise. We give you Nanda Bokusa Tamashaya. Father, I feel such a double anointing being released upon your people. And I just say, take it now in the name of Jesus. Take the double anointing of the Holy Spirit of God that is being released right now in the name of Jesus. Take it. Take it right now. Take it right now. Take it right now. There's a double anointing. There's a double anointing coming upon your ministry. Take it, take it, take it. There is a double anointing coming upon your ministry. And this anointing is the ability to get the work done. It's double grace. God is releasing the grace for you to get the job done. The ability to get the job done. Whether it's ministry, whether it's your business, whether it's school. Whatever it is that you need to get the job done, it is being released to you in a double portion right now. In the name of Jesus, there's a double anointing released right now. There's a double anointing being released right now. Just lift your hands and take it. Lift your hands up. Wherever you are, just lift your hands up and receive the double portion double grace to get the job it's an anointing to get the job done whatever God is asking or he has given for you to do tonight he's releasing a double grace the double ability to get it done it seems like it's been a struggle but tonight the struggle is over yes sir Father, I lift up California before you right now. Father, we pray, God, for these fires. We pray against these storms. Father, I pray, God, that your spirit will come upon California in the name of Jesus. We cover your people. We cover your people in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just release a blessing upon California right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, spare homes, spare lives. Lord, we just pray, God, for a double portion of grace. 
to be released upon California tonight in the name of Jesus. I feel this double portion, this double grace. I feel it tonight. I feel it. You couldn't do it before. It would just seem like a struggle. But God is releasing a double grace. Where you struggled before, you're not going to struggle anymore in that. There is a double anointing release tonight. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. How great thou art, O oh God. There's a double release. I just keep hearing that. So, yes, God. Father, we thank you for your double. We give you glory and we give you honor tonight. We declare how great you are, God. Amen. Thank you, Henrietta. May it be released to you. Yes, Dana, I see you. We thank you for the double release tonight, God. We thank you, God, for the double release right now. Thank you, Lord, for the double. But God, I just hear you saying that you're making it possible. I hear you saying that you're making it possible. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, that whatever we need to be possible, I thank you tonight that you have made it possible. You have now made it happen. I thank you. For the double grace is making it possible for us. And we receive it now in the name of Jesus. We give your name glory. Oh God, and sings our song. Father, we just declare your greatness over this Facebook Live. We declare that you are great. And our soul cries out how great thou art, O oh God. For Lord, you do all things well. You are accomplishing things in the spirit realm that we have not been able to be accomplished in the natural. Father, I thank you for accomplishing. I thank you that there is a performance of what you are doing, oh God, that there shall be a performance of what you have done tonight. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. How great thou art. I see you, Pastor Donna. I feel like there's a transaction being taken. There's a transaction happening in the spirit. I feel movement. I feel movement. Thank you, Lord God. God, we give you praise.
said things are about to change and he took me into Ezekiel 36 so when you get a chance just read Ezekiel 36 thank you dear God listen everybody thank you Thank you so much for your time tonight. Um, when I come on, on on Tuesdays, I usually start at 9 o'clock p.m., so I really try to go for an hour um, because I don't want to have everybody up here till 11 o'clock at night. But tomorrow, God's willing, I will be, that's it, expect a change. I will be on at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Amen. So please tune in. If you don't mind, please share this video tonight. Please share this Facebook Live tonight. I believe that um, there were some words that were spoken that were for people that are going to hear it on replay. So please, please share this tonight. Amen. I love you. I thank God for you. Thank you for spending tonight with me. It meant so much. God bless you, Elder Leonard, Pastor Dominic, Pastor Leonard, Pastor Dominic, Dana, Henrietta, and to everybody else that's up here and to those that are going to watch it later. I love you, and I will see you tomorrow. Good night. Bye-bye.